So hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto accepts Sean's offer and build new village, this is part 1, and if you want more then please leave a like share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Our clouds covered the sky. Thunder rumbled, lighting flashed, and raindrops were hitting the ground at astonishing speeds. All in all, this wasn't the weather to be walking in. Yet for one spiky, blonde-haired person, this was what Yuzumaki Naruto was doing. As he walked, his mind wandered back to what happened two weeks ago, on that fateful day where all his dreams shattered in one heartfelt moment. Flashback. Naruto entered the newly built Kanahagakur no Sato Council Chamber. All of the counselors were present, along with Tsunade and her elders, Mitakado Hamura and Yudatin Kaharu. It had been four weeks ever since the battle versus pain and his bodies. Naruto looked at everyone present, dread filling every fiber of his bones. He had been called to discuss a matter with the council and all of Konoha. By looking at his adopted grandmother's face, he knew he was in for a world of hurt. Yuzumaki Naruto, so glad of you to join us, started Hamura. Please take a seat. Naruto took his seat right next to Tsunade, who couldn't look at her adopted son's face. Naruto, do you know why you have been called today? questioned Hamura. Deciding to actually be nice and respectful for once, Naruto answered, no elder Mitakado, I do not. The Haru picked up from where Hamura left off. It has come to our attention that you nearly unleashed the Kayubi during your recent fight. Naruto finally understood where this was going, and he knew he wasn't going to like the outcome. Once again deciding to play dumb, he replied, and what does that have to do with anything? I was able to defeat pain. However, only Naruto knew that he really did not defeat pain. Only he knew that he had convinced pain to finally end the bloodshed and allow himself to go into the afterlife. You are correct in that you were able to beat pain, stated Hamura. However, the council has decided that you're too much of a liability to this village and the people. Therefore, for the last week or so, we have debated and have come to the conclusion that you have to leave. This is all putting it nicely, by the way. Immediately, Naruto stood up from his seat, despite the cry of the elders to sit his butt back down. Are you serious, he shouted, anger clearly etched on his face. Have you guys gone incredibly insane? What would make you even think I would deliberately hurt the people of Konoha? Regardless of if you want to hurt the people or it was all by accident, the decision has already been made. By tonight, you are banished from this village. You are hereby stripped of your rank. If you come close to Konoha, we will issue a kill on side order on you. Later, in Naruto's apartment. Naruto looked at what he was bringing. His basic orange and black shirt and pants, several pairs of such clothing, several Raymond cups for his journey, his kunai and shuriken, and his reverse summoning scroll, which was tied to his back. He was also bringing his father's special kunai, which Naruto found while scrounging through the Hokage's basement. But now another problem had arisen. Where was he supposed to go? As the many destinations ran through mind, Naruto found he couldn't go to too much places. Sun Agakur was his first option, but then that would only complicate the current situation. Even though him and Gara were best friends, Gara was Kazika gay, and the Sand Council could alert the Kanoha Council of him being there, since the two were allies. The next destination was Yuki no Kuni Hara no Kuni, but that was too far away. It would take him more than what did he pack to head to there. Even though he was aching to see Princess Koyuki, he simply didn't have the supplies to go see her. Up next was Nami no Kuni. Tazuna and his family would welcome him with open arms, but last he heard, Kurigakur was still in midst of a civil war, and Naruto did not want to put Tazuna and his family in danger if Kiri went for them and the land of waves. As the list went on and on, Naruto started becoming saddened. Suddenly, he had remembered one of the promises he made to someone. As the memory came back, a smile seemed to split his face. He had finally had an idea where he would go. Priestess Shion and Oni no Kuni. As Naruto though about this place, he couldn't find any fault about going there. The people loved him for saving Shion. Shion herself loved Naruto, and even though he didn't know it back then, the promise he made was to father more priestesses for Shion. The land was far away enough to not put anyone he loved in danger, but close enough that it did not take months to get there. The land was not allied with any known elemental nation, so no one knew that he would be there for a long time. With his destination set in mind, Naruto got ready and packed all of his remaining gear and supplies. It was time to pay Shion a long-awaited visit. Then flashback. It took two weeks, filled with some detours to replenish his supply of Raymond, for Yuzumaki Naruto to get to Onikunai. As the view of the semi-large gate appeared right before his eyes, Naruto breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, I'm here, he said. There were two guards posted as duty. One of them stepped forward and declared, Halt. State your name and reason for coming to Onikunai. Naruto immediately got confused. When did this happen he wondered. Deciding that was a question in the near future, he replied. The name is Yuzumaki Naruto, and I have come to fulfill a promise I made some time ago. 
The guards immediately bowed to Naruto. Yuzumaki-sama, it is great to see you again. The priestess will be happy to know that you have come to visit her again. The group started to walk into the town, where Naruto saw many happiness and tranquility. Men were lounging around or were walking around. Women were walking with their loved ones or laughing with their best friends. Children were running around and just enjoying their youthful lives. All in all, it was the best picture that Naruto could paint. However, despite the beautiful scene that was right in front of his eyes, Naruto also noticed the increased security around the town. There were more guards posted several yards away from the gate, and when they got to the palace, Naruto also saw more guards posted, at least three times more than what he saw the last time he was here. Deciding that he was missing something, he turned to the guard and asked him the question that was on his mind. Excuse me, but why so many guards? Last time I was here, there was not that much. The guard immediately got a sad look. Yuzumaki-sama, the priestess has not told you in her letters. What letters, Naruto asked. I have not received any letters ever since I last saw Shion. The guard got an angry look. You are saying that you have not received any letters from the priestess. The guard wanted to make sure that he had heard Naruto correctly. That is what I am aware of, replied Naruto. Was I supposed to receive letters? Yes, the priestess takes time out of ruling to write you letters, and when you never replied back, she got both angry and sad, replied the guard. It tore us up, not to mention the many assassinations on her life. The guard thought he had said this low enough, but Naruto still hurt him and he became mad. Who has been trying to kill her? Naruto wanted answers and damn it, he was going to get them. The guard took note of Naruto's rising voice and decided to stop there. Yuzumaki-sama, Priestess Shion will fill you in when we get to her. Now I know it took you a while to get here, so would you like to rest for the rest of the day? I can have one of the inns get you a room for now, and you can visit the priestess later. Knowing that is was best to wait for Xiang, Naruto decided to take the guard's offer and was offered a room in one of the inns near the palace. It was hard to be a priestess. It was even harder to be a priestess that could tell who would die and when. Sadly, that was what Xiang was. Still, someone had to rule Oni no Kuni, and she had been selected to be its next ruler. Setting down another marriage proposal, she was brought back into the real world when a messenger came running into her chamber. Yes, she replied tersely. She really didn't want to be disturbed. The messenger took some time to catch his breath and then started. Ma'am, we have received a letter from Kumagakur. Xian sighed. This was the fifth letter in the last ten days. She really wished the Raikage would stop asking her for her hand in an arranged marriage. Her heart was for one man and one man only. What are the contents of this letter, she asked, already dreading the answer. The letter has asked you to either accept the marriage proposal, the messenger began. Xian stopped him there. Please return the letter just like I did the last several times. But ma'am, the letter says to either accept the proposal or he would declare war on us. This made Xian stop. Is the Raikage serious about this marriage thing she wondered. I know that he would not declare full war on us if he does not want to face the other villages. But it still raises the question of why he is going to such extremes. Before she could ask the messenger another question, someone else came running into the chamber. The person bowed right before the priestess and reported in. Guard Goro, reporting in. Goro then stood at attention. Xian nodded her head. At ease, she ordered. What is the news from the border patrol? Goro then produced a scroll and read out loud. Guard towers have reported only one sighting of another human. This person was asked to provide his name and reasoning for his visitation. The man claims to be one Yuzumaki Naruto and has. Goro stopped when Xian gasped. My lady, is something wrong, the concerned guard asked. Xian did not hear him. She had her hands on her mouth and she was trying really hard not to bolt out of the chamber and search for her beloved. Making sure that this was no joke, Xian asked the guard. Please state that name again. Yuzumaki Naruto. Guard Haruko has sent him to the inn right next to the palace. Goro never got to finish what he was saying before Xian bolted right past him. He blinked and then thought, that is one starstruck woman. Shrugging his shoulders, he turned to the messenger and asked, so what is the recent letter about? Naruto was currently lying down on the bed, staring at the ceiling. His mind had wandered to the guard's cryptic meaning. He was also thinking about Xian, and he wondered how much she had grown. Last time I saw her, I would have defined her as beautiful. She had a great face, beautiful eyes and a grand body. If I had to guess, she had at least a C cup, probably even a D cup what I wouldn't do to put my hands on those. He immediately sat up. God I'm turning into Iro Senen. He put his hands on his face and ran them down. All right calm down. It's perfectly normal to be thinking of Xian in that way. With her fine legs, beautiful amethyst eyes, and a personality to kill for. Not to mention those wonderful melons on her chest. He was put out of his thoughts when the door to his room was being knocked on. 
shacking his head to eliminate any lingering thoughts about Xian's assets. He walked to the door and opened it, only to find that the person knocking was the very person that he just thought about. Xian Chan, Naruto said. Naruto Kun, started Xian. As the two stared at each other, Naruto couldn't take his eyes of Xian. My god, he thought, she is even more of a goddess than last time. Her blonde hair still reached her waist, but now her hair had been swept to the side more and included some braids. Her amethyst eyes stood out more, thanks to the mascara that she wore. Her clothing consisted of a deep blue kimono that hugged her body, and Naruto could see every delicious feminine curve imaginable. To complete this beautiful ensemble, she had on deep blue sandals. There was also a purple bracelet that was on her left wrist. While Naruto was appraising Xian, she was doing the same with Naruto. Could Naruto get any more handsome she thought. Even though Naruto had packed his suitcase full of his favorite black and orange shirts and pants, he decided to dress up in civvies for today. The dark black muscle shirt clung to his body, showing off his well-built arms and some of his abs. He had on orange cargo pants and he was wearing black shoes. The one thing that caught Xian was the simple fact that he now towered over her. If she had to guess, he was at least 6 feet 2 inches. The more that they stared at the other, the more Naruto's eyes started to travel downward. To be more precise, his eyes traveled down to the chest area. His eyes nearly flew out of his head. Forget being a C-cup, she must be at least DD. Naruto, my eyes are up here, Xian stated. He snapped out of his thoughts. Xian, it's nice to see you again. It's been a long time since my last visit. Xian smiled. Far too long, my handsome man. Naruto blushed. Xian Chan, I'm not that handsome. I'm sure you've got marriage proposals from the most wealthiest and most handsome of men. At the mention of the marriage letters, Xian grew sad. It was common knowledge in Oni no Kuni that Xian received at least 10 different marriage proposals each week. Most of them came from Kumagakur, but she had also received some from Sunagakur and Awagakur. Tai no Kuni's daimyo also sent her letters asking her to wed his youngest son. Xian had politely declined all of them, but she was nearly at her wit's end with the letters. Suna had stopped about two days ago, but Iwa and Kuma were persistent. Xian did I say something wrong asked Naruto, looking at her facial expression. Xian immediately plastered a fake smile on her face. No Naruto, you didn't say anything wrong. It's just that you know she immediately had to think of something. Flu season is coming up and I think I might have gotten it. Now Naruto was no idiot. Sure he was super dense sometimes, but even he could tell that smile was fake, that something was bothering Xian. However, he decided to let it be, knowing that Xian would discuss it later with him in a more secure place. So how has ruling Oni no Kuni been for you Xian, asked Naruto. Xian put a hand on her forehead. It's been a hassle, that's for sure. I can't go for a day without hearing reports of bandits and other troublemakers in Oni no Kuni. Naruto smiled. I'm sure it can't be that bad. Xian rays bother her eyes up to Naruto's face. Oh really? Last week I got a report that someone was tearing up marketplaces looking for Raymond. When I sent three guards to the town, they reported that all the marketplaces and stores were out of stock of Raymond. Naruto scratched the back of his head. Well um that was partially my bad. Xian smirked. Partially. Knowing you Naruto, it was more than just partially your fault. If I had to hazard a guess, it was your entire fault that that town ran out of Raymond. At least I left a good sum of money, Naruto retorted. Xian sighed. That's beside the point, Naruto. Because of you, I have had more headaches in the past week than I have ever had in the past month. Naruto shrugged. At least I make things interesting for you, right? Xian giggled. You got that right. If it wasn't for you I would be dealing with reports about wars and assassinations. Xian shut her mouth right then and there. She hadn't meant to say those words, and she hoped that Naruto didn't pick them up. Unfortunately, Naruto hurt her and decided to capitalize on it. What do you mean, reports about assassinations and wars? Naruto wanted to know who would assassinate young Xian. Seeing that Naruto would not stop asking unless she told him, Xian unclamped her mouth. For the past two months, my guards have stopped at least 15 different assassinations attempts. But before we could determine who would kill me, all the bodies were burned because of some kind of jutsu. We are no closer to finding out than we were two months ago. Tears started to come out of Xian's eyes. It was too much for her, with the many assassination attempts and the marriage proposals. Now that she had involved Naruto, Xian knew that she would have to use Naruto as protection. After what happened the first time, that was the last thing Xian wanted. Naruto pulled Xian into a hug and tried to calm her. What are you afraid of? You know that nothing could kill you. Through her sobs, Xian told him. It's not hick me, it's you. I don't hick want to put into any kind of danger. Naruto laughed. Xian Chan, you should know that my life is one big circle of danger. I'm no stranger to danger. I would gladly give my life to protect you, Xian Chan. Somehow, Naruto always knew what to say and when. 
Xian stopped crying, though you can still her hiccup from time to time. What would I do without you, Naruto-kun? You would be trapped inside the stomach of a demon king that was hell-bent on the world, he replied. Besides, I'm here to stay. But why, what happened to Konoha, Xian asked. I thought you wanted to become Hokage. I thought that that was your dream. Naruto frowned. I guess you weren't informed of what happened. Sit down, this will take a while to explain. As Xian took a seat at the edge of the bed, Naruto pulled a chair from the room and began his tale. Five 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 five. Two hours later. And this is where I decided to come after what happened. Naruto finished. He watched Xian's face, waiting for any reaction, any kind of reaction. That was because Xian had been so quiet ever since Naruto had begun his tale. To say that Xian was mad would have been the understatement of the century. Inside Xian's mind, she was about ready to march to Konoha and beat several heads of several counselors. How could they do this to him she wondered. He beats one of the most powerful Akatsuki and they banish him because of the Kayubi. However, at the same time these thoughts were forming, an inner voice of hers then sang out. Oh well. They're lost, our gain. The council should have never let him go. I think it's only ladylike for you to show Naruto around the new village. You should also relax him, for his long journey here must have been very tiring. The innuendo that this hidden voice was trying to convey did not go unnoticed by Xiang. Blushing ten different shades of red, she tried to calm the inner war in her mind. I mean, I do love Naruto for what he did. But I'm not in love with him I. Sure keep telling yourself that. By the way, it might be best for you to go back to the real world, since our man has been calling us for like five minutes. Till we meet again. Wait I need your help in this situation oh crap. Xian was now really exasperated with her inner mind. Telling herself that she only liked Naruto, Xian followed her inner's advice and got back to actually listening to Naruto. Sorry about that Naruto, I was thinking about something, Xian apologized. What were you saying? I was asking whether or not you would be alright of me staying here, Naruto answered. Xian had retained her calm exterior, but on the inside, her consciousness was doing cartwheels. It would honor me for you to stay here, hero of Oni no Kuni. Naruto blushed. You know I don't like titles, Xian. Xian giggled. Well, you do go out of your way to earn said titles. If you had not been banished from Konoha, you would have earned a different title than the one I just gave you. I don't think so, Naruto answered. I actually I would have been fine with just the villagers actually accepting me rather than sending glares and hateful looks my way. You always had a heart of gold, Naruto, Xian stated. If it was me, I would have hated the village for what they did to me. Naruto shook his head at Xian. Well I would have, but someone came to me and explained the entire thing to me. Xian now was more puzzled than ever before. Who came to you? My father, Minato Namikas. It was hard to not miss the shock that came to Xian's face. The fourth Hokage. The one and only wielder of the Hiroshin Jutsu. That Minato Namikas. Naruto had to cover his ears at that last part. Yeah that was my reaction too. Though I didn't squeal like a girl. Xian pouted. That's because you're not a girl in the first place, Naruto. Naruto smiled. Touché. Score one for Xian. Xian laughed at Naruto's antics. Besides getting to know that your father is the fourth Hokage, what else did you learn during the pain attack? Naruto sighed. Nothing much. I guess finding out who your father is Kinda tops the cake in my book. Xian nodded, Kinda getting what Naruto was saying. Though in her situation, what shocked her the most was that Naruto was the son of the fourth Hokage, yet he was telling her this like he knew it all along. Suspecting that he did, she asked. Naruto, you seem to be taking this Kinda cool like. Doesn't any of this surprise you at all? Naruto shrugged. I always had this feeling that I knew the fourth Hokage, but I never let the thought spring forward until I returned to Konoha. When I looked at the mountain, I was shocked to see that I was a splitting image of him. But once again, I let the feeling drop, thinking that I was going insane. That has happened to me a lot you know. Xian giggled once more. You're right on that part. I have never seen a person, much less a ninja, that has to go through the same situations that you have to go through. Naruto shrugged again. You get used to it after a while. Hell, my first C-ranked mission turned into an A-ranked mission because we faced a missing nin. You know, you never told me about your training trip with Jiraiya, Xian pointed out. I would like to know what happened during those two and a half years of training. Naruto smiled. Boy Xian, you're in for a real treat. But first, would my lady like to show me around the village? Xian stood up. Well I guess I can take you up on that offer. The village has grown ever since you last left. Naruto nodded. I would like to see it. 55 quadrillion 555 trillion 555 billion 555 million 555 True to Xian's word, the village had turned to the better ever since Naruto was last here. 
There were many more vendors than last time, there were a dozen new civilian clothing stores, and at least two theaters were built. There was even a ninja shop, which surprised Naruto greatly. Turning to Xion, he asked her about this. Xion, I have noticed that there was a ninja store a couple of stores back. Care to enlighten me? After you guys left, there was an order for a new store in the village, Xion started. Naturally, we thought that the store was going to sell civilian merchandise, but when the store opened with kunai, shuriken and all different kinds of swords as the stock. We figured the owner was looking to make at least some ninja and oni no kuni. I agreed with him, and ever since then, we have been training a small force of ninja in our village. Naruto was surprised, to say the least. He then asked, how many ninja do you have in your ranks? Xion shook her head. Not much. At best, 5 to 20 are ninja hopefuls, while another 50 have shown promise. But they barely have next to any chakra. That's why I increased the guards around the palace until we could get a suitable ninja to train them in the basics. Naruto smiled. This was a perfect opportunity to help Xion. You know, I could train those people. Even if they have next to no chakra, I could teach them the basic jutsu, like the henge, the bushin jutsu and the kawarimi. They should be good enough to learn the basics. Xion turned to Naruto. She had a smile plastered on her face. Would you really teach them? Naruto nodded. Anything to protect my lady from those who wish to kill her. Xion jumped and hugged Naruto. Thank you, thank you. With your help, we should be able to defend ourselves greatly. Naruto blushed. Naruto only received a hug once before, and that was from Hirono Sakura. But if he was to say that hugs didn't help him feel loved, he'd be classified an idiot. So doing what was natural in a hug, he wrapped his arms around her frame. His gentleman side liked how her hair smelled like fresh roses. His perverted side liked how her breasts felt, even though both were clothed. Must rain and perverted side he kept on thinking. All too soon, Xian broke the hug and smiled. I thank you once again for your help, Naruto-kun. Xian chan you've always had my help, even when I had left and went back to Konoha. I know, Xian replied. I just never imagined what sort of impact you would have in my life and in this village. If only I had known you earlier, I wouldn't have acted like a bitch to you. Naruto dismissed her with a wave. Trust me, Xian. I know you had your reasons. After Teruho told me why, I could understand you. But didn't mean that I was going to make you live the same life that I lived. Don't forget that I never go back on my word. That is my Nindo, for now and forever. Xian smiled. Naruto really does have a heart of gold. It's amazing that no girl has pursued him because of his gentleness and heart. Also his looks aren't too bad to boot her consciousness pointed out. So now you decide to come out, Xian told her consciousness. I really needed your help back at the inn. You handled yourself pretty well in my opinion. So, have you sorted out your feelings for the spiky? Xian shook her head. I really don't know how I feel about Naruto. I mean, I know he promised to help me with the nest line of priestesses, but I never though of actually doing the deed with him. Fate has a way of putting things and making things fit in a natural order. Of course, knowing Naruto, he doesn't believe in fate. Xian smiled. I kinda figured that out after he was able to avoid my prophecy of him dying. I know right. Anyway, I think it's time I took a little break. Bye. Xian sighed. Her consciousness was really starting to piss her off. Hey Xian, Naruto said, interrupting her from her thoughts. Among the people who had decided to become ninja, are there any that really stand out? Xian thought for a moment. Well there is this one girl, named Amarante. She shows promise and has a massive amount of chakra. But she has no control whatsoever. Naruto smiled. She's just like me what's her background? Her parents died during the first time Morio had to be sealed, Xian explained. As best as we know, she has shown a skill for wind, since whenever she is lonely, the winds pick and envelope her in a shield-like closure. Naruto nodded. I would like to meet Amarante. Xian shrugged. She lives in an orphanage not too far from here. Follow me. 5 quadrillion 555 trillion 555 billion 555 million 555,555. Amarante was never really expecting anyone to come visit her. Sure, she had the occasional visit from Lady Xian about ninja business, but other than that, she had no visitors. So it came as a surprise to her when the owner of the orphanage came into her room and said that the priestess was here with someone else. Getting out of her bed and putting on her sandals, she marched down to the lobby. Lady Xian was currently talking to the owner, while a stoic blonde man stood beside her. Amarante wondered who this could be. Deciding she would ask later, Amarante bowed to Xian. Lady Xian, to what do I owe this great pleasure? First, you can stand up since you know I hate it when you bow, Xian retorted, though it was all for good fun. Secondly, I would like to introduce you to Yuzumaki Naruto, former genin of Konoha, and the container of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Amarante gasped. She had heard of the young blonde's exploits. 
What could he be doing here? Seeing the shocked look on Amarante's face, Naruto stepped forward. I see you've heard about me, young Amarante. I have also learned some things about you. Amarante found her voice again. What exactly have you learned about me? For one, you are an orphan, just like me. Two, you joined the shinobi ranks in this village. You are actually setting yourself on a good path. Three, you know wind jutsu, or you have an inkling to be a wind user. Amarante hung her head. I guess I do that subconsciously. The wind feels nice and it keeps me warm. It almost feels like I am wanted by something. Now don't be getting all sad on me here, Naruto said. I just want you to know that I will be helping you, along with the others, in becoming shinobi. I have also heard that you need help in your control. Amarante became astounded. He wants to train me. She then asked, why would you want to train me? I have so many problems next to my control. That's where I come in. In addition to the regular training that everyone else will receive, you and I will be training together to improve your skills. Naruto said all this while a smile started to form. It's all for the best. Amarante, I promise you that I will become both your sensei and your friend. Naruto then continued. In about a week, Xian Chan is assembling all the shinobi hopefuls, and I'm going to be running them through some drills and basic academy jutsu. Don't be late now, Amarante. Amarante then bowed her head. Of course, Naruto sensei. Naruto nodded again. Turning on his heel, he said to Amarante, see you soon, my immortal flower. And with a wave and a flurry, Naruto walked out of the orphanage. Xian sighed, waved goodbye to Amarante, and chased after Naruto. 55,555,555,555. I'm kind of surprised you didn't say anything back there, Naruto said to Xian when she was able to catch up to him. That would have been counterproductive to getting the general message through, Xian retorted. Naruto shrugged. So what are you doing for the rest of the day? Nothing much, other than meetings with several nearby villages. Say, what would you say to a date with me? Xian had been saying this and watched in amusement as Naruto started turning beet red. Really, I wouldn't want to impose. Xian grabbed the front of Naruto's shirt. You will go on a date with me. You will enjoy said date and you will wear something formal and nice. If you don't agree with any of these, I will hurt you so bad that not even the Kayubi will be able to save you. Do I make myself clear, Yuzumaki? Naruto gulped. Crystal Lamam. Xian then proceeded to pat Naruto on the head, like a dog. So sweet of you. Pick me up by the time the sun is down. Xian then skipped happily away. Naruto stood there, with a dumbfounded expression on his face. Only one thing was going through his mind. What in the hell did I just get myself into? Hanahagakur no Sado, hi no Kuni. Three weeks after Naruto's banishment, one week after Naruto arrives in Oni no Kuni. Another day had started in Konoha. The entire village was just awakening from a slumber not plagued by bad memories of the Kayubi attack, this for the older generation. However, in the Hokage's office, one person was already awake. Tsunade Senju sat at her desk, deep in thought. Normally, there would be a pile of paperwork strewn across said desk, but the only thing on the desk was a bottle of empty sake. This would have been a cause of concern for Shizune and Sakura, but this had been going on ever since Naruto was banished. As she sat, Tsunade was wondering the same thing that had been plaguing her for the last week. The whereabouts of her adopted son, one Yuzumaki Naruto. So far, no words have reached her from the many rescue teams that she sent out. Flashback one week ago. Tsunade clasped her hands together, getting a headache by the minute. Assembled before her were Kakashi, Kurinai, Maido Gai and their respective teams. She had called them for an S-rank meeting. Tsunade unclasped her hands. I have called you here for a very important information. Please remain quiet until I have told you what has happened. Tsunade began. One week ago, a council meeting had been in session. This meeting was kept secret to the rest of Kanoha and its ninja. You may have recognized that Naruto is not here, nor has he been seen for the past week. All the people present nodded. Tsunade continued. That is because during that meeting, it was decided by council majority, both ninja and civilian, that Naruto would be banished because of his unleashing of the Kayubi during the pain invasion. The Chunin present all gasped while the Jounin present all sighed. This was just like the council, mostly Danzo, to treat Naruto. Even after he had risked his life and his many limbs to save them, the council still decided that he was a liability and banished him. A new question that came into the minds of all those present, what would the repercussions be now that Naruto was gone? Tsunade spoke again, interrupting their thoughts. However, I have called you three today to mount a rescue operation. You are to retrieve Naruto from wherever he went and bring him back here. Now all the shinobi present went wide-eyed. Kurinai spoke first. But Hokage-sama, wouldn't that go against the decision from the council? Yes, Tsunade replied, completely oblivious to the fact that she had been interrupted. But damn the council and damn their decisions. 
I don't care what they say. But since I already used my yearly veto, I couldn't veto the decision by the council, and something tells me they knew it too. They spoke next. So what are we going to do if we find Naruto Hokage? Bring him back here, she replied. Shizune and I will do our best to change his appearance and give him fake documents. The council can't say anything to that. Bakashi then spoke. So where would you like us to search? Bakashi's team will search in the vicinity around Sunagakur and its villages. Guy, your team will head to Nami no Kuni and ask around. Kur and I will head to Tori no Kuni and ask around there. You all must report in one week's time. All nodded their heads. Tsunade turned around in her chair so that her back was facing the shinobi. With one word that would change the lives of so many, she said dismissed. Flashback ends. Tsunade pinched her nose. So far, only Guy's team and Kurinai's team had reported back. Each one had said that Naruto had not gone there, nor was he seen or even heard from ever since both villages last saw him. Where are you, Nai-san? Tsunade kept wondering this ever since the reports came back in. It was hard for Tsunade to admit, but she missed the young knucklehead more than anything right now, sitting up straight in her chair, Tsunade put on her Hokage voice. Enter. The door opened, revealing her and Osakura. The second apprentice of the Slug Queen had grown quite nicely, that is, in training, in the three weeks since Naruto was banished. Oddly enough, Sakura was one of the few ninja who did not know of Naruto's banishment, the other being the Anbu ninjas and the current group of genin. Tsunade was mildly surprised to see her apprentice. As far as Tsunade knew, Sakura was not scheduled for any appointments with her, nor was today a training day. Keeping a straight face, Tsunade decided to amuse herself for a couple of minutes. Sakura, shouldn't you be at the hospital? Shizune gave me the day off for today, replied Sakura. I was kind of wondering where Naruto was, Tsunade sensei. Tsunade sighed. How did she know that Sakura would ask that question? Kanohimaru had asked that question the first day that Naruto was banished. Luckily, the third Hokage's grandson was dumb enough to be convinced that Naruto had gone out on a mission and would be returning soon. Unfortunately, that same excuse would not work on Sakura multiple times. Sooner or later, Sakura would ask why she wasn't sent along with Naruto to these missions. Tsunade needed a better excuse this time. Naruto has gone on vacation Sakura. Once Tsunade had said that, she immediately smacked herself in the face. No one in their right mind would believe that lie. Damn it, I knew I should have not drunk in sake last night. Of course, Sakura picked it up easily. Sensei, you know me better than that. You know I'm smarter. So where is Naruto? Yes, I got to let the cat out of the bag sooner or later. Now I know what Tora feels like every single day. Before Tsunade had a chance to answer, there was another knock on the door. Praying to Kami for getting her out of answering Sakura, Tsunade spoke in the direction of the door. You may enter. The door opened, revealing Kakashi, Chaoji, Shikamaru and Ino. Each one looked a little under the weather, but Tsunade is expecting that. After all, it took three days to get from Kanoha to Suna, and three days to get back from Suna to Kanoha. So in reality, the team had one good day of rest. What do you have to report? Normally, the other two teams had verbally told of their reports, but since Sakura was not made aware of Naruto's banishment, it posed a problem if Kakashi were to tell Tsunade. Fortunately, Gara had more things to say other than if Naruto was there, so he decided to write it out on a scroll, which Kakashi handed to Tsunade. Thank you Kakashi. As of right now, you and your team have a day of R&R you are to report to the tower tomorrow morning with teams Kurinai and Guy. Dismissed. But the bow, Kakashi disappeared, leaving Tsunade with Fortunin in her office. Seeing that there was more to be said, Tsunade turned to Shikamaru. Was there something else that was not in the report, Shikamaru? Shikamaru shook his head. Other than the fact that this was a troublesome mission, everything is in the report, Hokage. Tsunade nodded her head. Then I'll say it again. Your team is dismissed and don't forget about the meeting tomorrow. Shikamaru nodded and left. Chaoji, eating a bag of chips, left with Shikamaru. Ino, however, stayed behind with Sakura and Tsunade. Tsunade noticed this and was wondering why. Okage-sama, may I talk to Sakura for a little bit? Ino asked. Why would you want to talk to Sakura, Ino? Tsunade wondered. Ino shrugged. Just to catch up. Tsunade sighed. Fine, then go. I'm sure you two have a lot to talk about. Both of them turned to the door and started waking. While Sakura had her face forward, Ino turned her head back to Tsunade and mouthed some words. To the naked eye, it looked like a couple of words stringed together. But Tsunade got the message. Ino had just mouthed, should I tell her? Tsunade nodded her head. Ino gave a thumbs up and walked out. Tsunade then reached into her secret drawer and picked out another bottle of sake. This is going to be one long day she thought. Kami would have agreed with her. So Ino, how was your mission? Sakura asked. Where exactly did you guys go? 
The Kashi and our team went to Suna, Ino replied. Things are pretty much normal there ever since the Akatsuki attack. Sakura nodded, but Ino could tell that Sakura had a lot more questions than that one. It surprised her that Sakura hadn't asked if she knew where Naruto was right off the bat. So Ino, do you know where Naruto is? And there went the question. Ino sighed. Before I tell you, let's go get some breakfast. I'm sure there is something around here that does serve breakfast. Okay. Sakura was now getting worried. It wasn't like Ino to try and stall for time. Normally, Ino would blurt everything and anything, even if it was not all that important. Just shaking her head, Sakura followed Ino into a small restaurant. After they had sat down and placed their orders, there was an uncomfortable silence at the table. Seeing that Ino would not start, Sakura decided to break the ice. You seem to have a lot on your mind Ino, she said. Penny for your thoughts. Ino shrugged. Yeah give me some time. I have a lot to discuss with you. So I'm surprised that Kakashi is your new sensei, Sakura stated. I thought you guys would be able to handle yourselves. Ino shook her head. Even Shikamaru knew that once Kakashi volunteered to be our sensei for the two immortal Akatsuki, Tsunade would put him on our team, since you need a Jounin instructor. Of course, Kakashi just sits and reads his book while we train. Must suck pretty bad that you have the lazy Jounin as your sensei, Sakura pointed out. Ino giggled. Most of the times it does, but he explained that since we were Chunin and actually did really well, he had nothing to teach us, next to making us stamina freaks like Naruto. Once Ino had said that, the atmosphere of the conversation went from sunny to cloudy. Both of the ladies there knew what would happen. Only one knew of the outcome of the upcoming conversation. Ino, Sakura started. Do you know where Naruto is? Not exactly, Ino replied. Sakura narrowed her eyes. What do you mean not exactly? Ino put her elbows on the table. If I tell you this, you have to promise that you won't speak of this to anyone else. Ino why would I? Ino help up her hand. Promise me Sakura. Sakura nodded her head. I promise Ino. Alright strap yourself in. This going to take a while. Right when Ino finished, the food arrived. Ino had just gotten six slices of toast and some jelly. Sakura, for whatever reason that escaped Ino, had ordered ramen. As they were eating, Ino started. What exactly has Lady Tsune told you about Naruto? She said that she had sent Naruto on some missions, Sakura replied. Ino was a little confused. This didn't surprise you? Well at first it did, but I knew that Naruto could take care of himself. Sakura realized how much she was played. I thought I was smarter than this. Well anyway, Ino continued, it's more than just him being sent on missions. What are you talking about, Ino pig? Naruto was banished three weeks ago, Sakura. Sakura, who was about to take another couple of noodles from her ramen, immediately stopped. Naruto banished. Sakura could not wrap her mind around the concept. It was like a bad nightmare that came into her life. Sakura gulped and looked at Ino. You can't be serious right? I mean, that sounds absolutely ridiculous after what Naruto went through. Ino put her hands on her face. That's what I thought too. It actually took a lot of convincing from Lady Tsune to finally make me see that Naruto was gone. But look forehead, what I'm saying is that the reason why you haven't seen Naruto is because Naruto is not in the leaf anymore. Sakura was still shaking her head. This is some joke right? Some kind of elaborate joke that you and the entire village cooked up because I had been so bad to Naruto early in his life. Is that it? Well listen here, I'm not buying any of this BS. Ino sighed again. Why did this have to be so difficult? Ino had an idea that Sakura would take it hard, but she never imagined it would be this hard. She was outright denying that Naruto was gone, even though Sakura herself had not seen Naruto for the week since Pain's invasion. Finishing the last of her toast, Ino stood up and paid for her breakfast. Well if you don't believe me, you can ask Lady Tsunade. It's nice to see you again, forehead and take care. With those words, Ino went out of the restaurant, leaving Sakura to her thoughts. As Ino's words hit home, Sakura knew that some of it was true, but her irrational mind was screaming at her that it was all still a joke, that Naruto was still in the leaf, probably at some secret training ground that she was not aware of. There is only one way that I can find out for real. I have to look at that scroll that Kakashi Sensei gave to Lady Tsunade. With that in mind, Sakura paid for her stuff and left a very nice tip for the waitress. Midnight, Hokage's office. Tsunade had gotten her paperwork finished and decided to go home for the evening. It's going to be nice to sleep on my bed and not on a desk, Tsunade thought. Before I go, I got to get something. She reached into her secret stash and got out another bottle of sake. But the smile and a shut of the lights, Tsunade shoeshined out of her office. Little did Tsunade know, there was another person inside the office. Had Tsunade been more cautious, she would have activated the traps in the office. But once again, in her haste to sleep on a bed, Tsunade had forgotten all those things. 
Sakura stepped out from the bookcase, patting herself on the back that she had learned the invisibility jutsu from Jiraiya before he had died. Alright, I have to find that scroll. Then I can find out if Ino was lying or not. Sakura first started out at the Hokage's desk, since that was the most obvious place to put said scroll. But after searching for several minutes, she stepped back frustrated. Okay maybe not Sakura thought. The bookcase was her next option, but that proved to be fruitless as well. Exasperated and on the verge of punching through walls, Sakura then searched around the room. After yielding no results, she tapped her foot on the floor, only to find out that there was a hollow spot. Peeling back the wood, she found the scroll along with about 90 pounds of sake bottles and jugs. Now I see how she gets all her sake, Sakura thought. Putting the piece of wood back, she opened the scroll and read its contents. The the Godim Hokage. It was a surprise to see some of your ninja at my gates. After Kakashi had explained, I can understand why you want this back. However, I am deeply sorry to inform you that Naruto is not here, nor has he been spotted near any of the villages around Suna. However, a rumor has been floating around that Naruto was heading toward the south, possibly to Hara no Kuni. I'll inform you of any change in developments. Bara, the Godim Kazikage. P.S. Tell the counselors that they are a bunch of idiots. Sakura dropped the scroll and covered her mouth. As she laid her back against the desk, images of her and Naruto started to come up. All the times that she had hit him and belittled him came back full force, making Sakura start to cry. Oh Naruto, she thought. Why? Why did this have to happen to you? As she continued to cry, she finally figured out that she needed Naruto, that she needed the strong supporting shoulder that Naruto gave to her. It was known that the words that were never said hurt more than the words that were said. That's it for today guys, I hope did you enjoyed this story if you do please leave a like share and subscribe, thanks for watching.